I was just finished talking about uh, the definition of functions. Uh, these are nice mechanisms for, for abstractions in, in coding. The next step in abstraction is this notion of uh, defining object classes. And at this point, hopefully everybody has hit uh, this notion of classes, but the idea is that what we're going to do is take a set of uh, variables. They can be primitives, they could be other objects. We're going to bind them all together into one notion of some something and then provide a set of operations that we can uh, perform on the on these individual objects. So the, so the key terminology here uh, is that uh, an object itself is contains a set of variables and, and those of you who hit object-oriented programming you'll see this term instance variables. This set of variables describes the state of a single object. The operations that can be, be performed on the object are referred to as instance methods. And, and what we mean by a method here is a function that can take action on an object. The underlying representation of both the instance variables and the instance methods is actually a dictionary. So you, you can actually take an object and treat it as uh, a, a dictionary in and of itself and manipulate it. Uh, using standard dictionary mechanisms. It's not necessarily a good idea, but uh, one can certainly uh, take those steps. So let's do an example in real code. So I'm gonna start by typing out a class definition and we'll talk about the different pieces as, as we go. So a class is defined using this class keyword and we'll call it test class. And notice the colon there and now anything that is uh, defined as part of this class uh, is indented by, by one level. For the most part, you need to provide some way of, some way of initializing new objects. So this, this init function here, it's a specially defined uh, function or, or method, I should say. Uh, it gets called whenever you create a, a new object. Uh, self here, this is a, a reference to the uh, object itself. And let, let's see how to use it here. So if I say self.name, what this means is I'm defining a variable called name that belongs to the, this particular object. And I can do things with it. So I can set say a, a string uh, value for name. And let's also give a self dot value here. And this can be anything, including integer values. Okay, so what we've done is we've created a, a function that defines how our object is to be initialized when it's first created. And let's define a function that uh, we'll add one to our value. So we'll call that increment. Self.value equals self.value.value .value plus one. So, so when we call this particular method, this just says look up the current value associated with this object, add one to it, and then set the value to that new value that we've uh, computed. Also going to provide a function uh, called setName that takes uh, more than one argument. So for all of these instance methods, you have to provide self as the first argument, but you can provide other ones. So we'll call this one new name. And all that this is going to do is set the current name of the object uh, to this new name. Notice that each one of these instance methods, the def occurs at the same indentation level as, as each other. Okay, so the, let's go ahead and use this class here. So I'm going to execute this and that's going to push that out to Python. And now I can uh, create a particular instance of this. So A is my variable. And if I say test class, 
with, uh, with open close parentheses. Uh, what this does is it says create a new instance of this object. And then the first thing we do is we call this init function. So I'm going to execute that. And, and now I can ask questions of this uh, object. So let's, let's ask A what it is. So you'll, so you'll see that it's a, an instance of test class. We can ask questions about the state of its individual variables, a.name. If I execute that, it gives me my foo, which was initialized here in the constructor. And likewise, I can uh, ask what the value is. Now, if I say a.increment and execute this, this, this a.increment refers to, it's a property of this particular object instance that refers to this function here. What you get back actually is, you're not actually executing the function when you specify it in this way. Uh, you are uh, actually getting back a reference to the function itself, which turns out to be uh, useful in lots of scenarios. If you want to actually execute the function, then you have to provide the open close parentheses. Now notice I'm not providing any arguments here. Uh, and, and yet the definition uh, asks for one argument. This self argument always by, uh, it, it's always provided implicitly uh, when when we're actually uh, calling this function here. So let's execute that. And then ask A what its value is. And notice now the value is uh, six where it was five. Now we can create other instances. So I can say B uh, equals test class. And A and B are independent of one another. So B uh, dot value is five um, because we created a, an independent instance from A. You can also ask A what its value is. And you'll notice that it's six because we did the increment here. Okay, so let's set uh, the name for B. We'll call the set name function. And again, set name you'll notice has a uh, self as the first argument, but again, that's implicitly provided. So if we execute this, it's, it's happy. Uh, and now we can ask what b.name is, and you'll notice that uh, the name has been reset to foobar, where it was the lowercase foo. Uh, at initialization time. We can also look inside of the representation for uh, a particular object instance. So, so here, uh, the dir function, this is, this stands for directory. Uh, so we're going to ask uh, what all of the keys are that are associated with this particular object instance. So if I execute that, you'll notice that we have a whole bunch of uh, different keys. Most of these are uh, defined automatically by Python, but you'll notice down at the bottom of this list, there's a property called increment that corresponds to the function that we defined, another property called name, another which is an instance variable, uh, set name is, a, is an instance method, and then value is an instance variable. Okay, I'd like to do one other thing. Let's define a new copy of this class. We'll call this uh, class test class two. And uh, there, there are times where it's useful to be able to index into a, an object instance. I'm going to give you sort of an odd uh, example here just to show off uh, how it works. And then uh, this will come up in, in a variety of examples as we get into scikit-learn. So I'm going to define a new function. Like a knit, it, it has a special meaning. 
and that's going to take two arguments. It's called get item. Uh, it's going to take the self and some sort of an index value. So if i is zero, then we're going to return the name. If i is one, then we'll return the value. And otherwise, we won't return anything. And, and Python has a special keyword called none to indicate that nothing is being returned. So let me execute. So let me execute this. And then I'll show you how it gets used. So we'll define a new a new instance. So uh, in, in this case of test class two. And c.name does the same thing as before, but I can also now, because of this get item um, method definition, I can now use square brackets to ask questions of this object. So if I ask for the zeroth item, I get back foo. And, and the reason that this works is that uh, when Python sees those square brackets, what it does is it goes out to that object instance, looks for this method here. Of course, self refers to the object, and then i is that zero. And in this case, when i is equal to zero, then we return the name. If I ask what uh, one is and execute that, I get back the, the value. And if I give it anything else, then nothing gets returned. So th this particular property, we probably won't be implementing our own get items, uh, but this uh, actually does come up as we're starting to deal with higher order objects as we get into pandas here uh, in a couple of videos. Uh, this get item uh, is, is implemented in, in very interesting ways.